Welcome. This is the monthly truck stop webinar presented by the Motor Carriers Insurance Education Foundation as part of the Transportation Risk Specialist Program. These are provided at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the second Thursday of each month. These webinars are not filed for CE credit. We do have programs for CE credit, so if you're seeking CE credit, these programs are for informational purposes only. If during the program you have questions, please put them in the chat window. I'll attempt to answer those questions during this presentation. If not, I'll follow up with an uh, email on you after we're over. If something happens during the presentation where you lose the audio or other things, please also type that in the chat window if you still have access to the program. If not, call our number, 800-741-4084. and you all will, this program will also be posted on our website for later review, and I think everybody that has uh, signed up for this has been presented with the outline itself. Fast at last. We have been looking at this and almost wore me out looking at what Congress is doing or not doing, writing programs or not, to finally the uh, bill that was put in place by both the Senate and the House came together. So Congress has passed last week, and the President has signed last Thursday the Fixing American Safety Transportation Act. That's where FAST comes from. Government likes acronyms. What was it? Well, it was a 1,300-page bill. But the important part is a five-year highway funding bill. Why is this important? The bill provides money to states and other entities to improve upgrades and build America's infrastructure. Is this very important to our truckers? Absolutely. A large part of the problems we're having in trucking now, if you read any of the uh, information by ATRA and others, is the congestions, the problems on our highway. One of the reasons crashes that have been reduced over the period of time was because of the uh, interstate system, but now they, it's becoming a problem with congestion. These are funds that will be presented or provided to build our infrastructure or to at least improve our infrastructure. It's a five-year plan. For years, we've had, quote, stat gap, gap operations, meaning that they have to fund this uh, money on a limited period of time, pushing it down, kicking the can down the field one or two months at a time. The funding we're talking about is spending the revenue that's generated through, for the fuel taxes that we collect. We all run, realize that the, if the program that we rely on in trucking uh, actually gives the states the fuel tax money to pay for the improvements on those individual roads and other taxes situation. The stop gap bill kept the projects moving forward but did not provide assurance that the new projects would be funded. Congress has used the funding bill to include provisions other than highway construction, like the suspension of the 38 restart hours that we are dealing with, uh, maybe re looking at again in February because the Virginia Tech study has, is over, was connected to a highway funding bill. These bills have to be passed, so it was a situation where the Congress either had to pass the funding bill, the stopgap bill, with this included, or not fund the highways. This is where we have it. The big question that we can talk about at a later date, and I would appreciate you looking at things that are done by the American Trucking Association, about where the funds are coming from. There was a push to have the highway fuel taxes connected with the diesel fuel to be increased, but Congress was not willing to do that. This anti-taxing situation led it where the Congress did not agree to increase the fuel tax, even though the largest consumer of fuel, which is the trucking industry, wanted them to do that to make sure the program is stable. But the good part is we do now have a five-year plan. From the online summary of the plan, that I found in one place, it says the Fixing American Surface Transportation Act, FAST, is five-year legislation to improve the national surface transportation infrastructure, including our roads, bridges, transit system, and rail transportation network. The bill reforms and strengthens transportation programs, reinforces on a national priority, provides long-term certainty, again, depending on funding, that's my comment, and more flexibility for states and local government. It streamlines projects approval process, meaning if it's ready to go, it's easier to be done. But it also adds this other and maintains a strong commitment to safety. 
50. The big part of the bill, the big part of the 1,300 pages of the bill had to do with projects, road projects, bridges projects, reconstruction, new items, and how those, uh, those projects would be funded. But the part that has to do with us is this last comment, strong commitment to safety. That's where the insurance industry comes into the strong commitment to safety. This is where Congress and FMCSA has been fighting for a number of years. Some of you remember the blog that we wrote about a year ago when Ann Ferry stand up and said, I don't care about in front of a Congress uh, committee, I don't care about what our rules and regs are doing to the trucking industry. We're trying to stop injuries on the highway. My comment there on the blog I wrote said the only way to stop that is park off trucks. There's a balance here. So the stated purpose of this part at, that affects insurance providers is a safety program. In the past two years or so, Congress has questioned what FMCSA's new rules and regulations are doing for motor carriers, meaning are they making regulations that cannot be adhered to? Is it just regulation and, and paperwork? or excuse me, and not paperwork or just compliance work and not really make the highways even safer. What we're balancing is safety and the operation of the motor carrier to operate because again, we could have safety in such a way to park the trucks and then nothing would get moved. That would stop all crashes. The balance also here is how can we, uh, how do these regs and rules affect the smaller motor carrier? The frequency of the constituency who are voting for our congressman. Congress has heard that F, the CSA and SMS is not fair and not a true measure of unsafe truckers or crash predictor. In fact, a part of the SMS program even has to have that statement and that's going to be reinforced and we'll revisit that again in a few minutes. But this is the problem they had. So what they, and we have read legislation that has gone to the taking the scores down, which we'll talk about in a minute, but not even allow it not to be presented in court cases. What the motor cover carrier was finding is these scores were being used adversely to them from shippers and insurance industry and other things. So Congress says it is and will keep moving forward with the improvement of the CSA program. This is what they forced to do. MAP 21, which was passed two years ago, required this to be done in the studies in that way. So this is what we're dealing with now to have this revamping of the CSA SMS program as a part of the FMCSA mandate from Congress to handle or to improve the program and in the interim to do something about uh, the scores that are presented. And this is why we're here today. Our blog, web webinars and other and our annual convention we've had speakers, Steve Bryant, Rob Mosley, Dan Murray of Actress, and other present information showing the flaws of the CSA. We knew that. It depends on where you're operating. It depends on what territory you're operating in. It depends on the size. It's been unfair. Some of you who were at the annual convention uh, last October will remember Steve Bryant using his Skittles examples where by just looking at the scores is not really a predictor of crashes and other things. Yet the insurance industry still considers CSA scores when underwriting and uh, particularly for smaller motor carriers. Yeah, it's a way to look at it quick to go forward or not. And this is what the conflict has been. Even though it's flawed, it has, in our insurance industry, become a standard that we've looked at in the past. So CSA scores, it's a quick measure to see, to use to deny a risk or move forward, meaning that if they have too high scores, it might not be worth our while because it does not fit our insurance model. CSA scores also affect settlements and claims. We talked about this. In some jurisdictions, the information contained in CSA where the defense attorneys can easily access because they could go online and find what they are, could exasperate the claims, but particularly smaller claims. There's a program that I contended that Rob Mosley did in Atlanta a number of months ago that talked about the alligator position of the plaintiff's attorneys, where if, when there's no negligence involved, they bring up other facts to exasperate the claim. Part of those are the CSA scores and how they're used. There's a whole part of the plaintiff legal bar that goes through how to effectively use CSA scores adversely against our motor carriers. So we have to look at that, even though we know it's flawed, if it comes up in claims, then we as an underwriter 
provider of insurance to these motor carriers have to consider those. And also, as a retail agent, because of this fact and because of retail agents, excuse me, because of the insurance industry looking at these facts, we need to make sure that uh, we help our insurer to prove this. The scores also have been an area of discussion that the retail agents have used with motor carriers. For you who have attended programs that I have done in the recent past, you know that I have a position that I think as a retail agent involving in motor carrier insurance, you have to offer more than a piece of paper. A part of that is to help the insurer prove their scores. Why? Because the insurance industry is looking at it. Why? Because shippers are looking at it. And why is we don't want our insurers to be involved in the DOT, come knocking on the door and audit them, and or even have their vehicles stop more often because of uh, their adverse scores. So this is where we've looked at this. So the motor carriers has been said in the past to live in a class house. Why? Because everything that they do roadside was published on the federal web pages and anybody, keyword there, anybody could access those scores and that information, how it would be compared. That comment was made by Rob Mosley a number of years ago here. The example I use when we talk about on a face-to-face -face program is think about having someone video or write down everything you do at your desk and then report that on YouTube or uh, one other public, uh, public medium program so everybody can see. So all road inspections reflected in SMS. Anyone could do those. CSA scores reflected in SMS. Anyone could do those. And if you went to any individual motor carrier's SMS page, on the bottom of it said that this risk, whatever that percentage is, say 90% of the motor carriers in the same safety event group had a better on-road performance than the motor carrier that we were looking at. That number could be whatever their score is based on that safety event group. And that's a concern here because you have that published out. In fact, you could even download the safety event groups. At the scores, at any base exceeded the intervention, the intervention threshold, there would be a triangle above the basic status. And when a truck threshold is exceeded, the motor carrier receives a warning letter. And in that warning letter, it says, a review of your safety data shows a lack of compliance and safety performance has fallen to an unacceptable level. What we're worried about in the insurance industry is that letter being presented in court cases. What's that going to do with the jury? Going back to the alligator theory of plaintiff's attorneys, trying to bring that up. What was missing in that letter, the fourth paragraph down, and I've been in a couple expert witness cases where the first part of this letter was read, but the last fourth paragraph was not. And what it says is, and here's where I suggest that retail agents need to be involved when your insured is approaching or close to a threshold, and have recommended that, the wording says from the warning letter, we urge you to take this warning letter seriously and improve your safety record. And so what we have been talking about in programs we have done is when our insured gets close to an alert to help them improve. So we set up those programs too. When you look at this, how many insurance providers look at the triangles as part of the underwriting process? Now take for a minute. Think here who's an audience. If you're an underwriter for an insurance company, when you look at the risk, whether you use CAB or going to the SMS directly, what reactions do you have those triangles? As a retail agent, do you solicit businesses based on the triangle? Do you offer services based on these alerts? We've been accustomed to looking at those things and having those things available to us in the past to trigger how we would provide services to a motor carrier, either from an underwriting standpoint or from a help standpoint. Some insurance companies have written unwritten rules. If you have two triangles, we will not write you, period. Goes forward, particularly smaller risk. Why? It saves time. It doesn't meet the model that we're willing to insure, and we decide as a part of the model is the safety culture of the motor carrier we have. And obviously, when you have two triangles, then there could be a problem with the safety culture of the insurer not paying attention. I totally understand that. And it was a shortcut. It saved us time by looking at that. Yet, when we look at these things, nobody really understood what a safety event group was, what made it up, what difference was it there. Yet, we've used that from the uh, public not understanding that.
doctors and lawyers using that, the juries that we have to explain this thing to, or uh, brokers, and also the insurance providers understanding what the safety event group is. So it was flawed, not misunderstood. Five years of CSA, how has it affected your insurers providing it? The motor carriers who you insure, court systems and shippers. Is the use of CSA score a reasonable factor to use when deciding to do business with a motor carrier? What Congress has decided was no. So at part of FAST, the scores will be hidden. So all of a sudden, and if you read my blogs last week, it said a day after the Congress, or excuse me, the President passed the act, the scores would be hidden. So as a part of the scores being hidden, if you went at that website Monday morning, you found nothing. And that was a part we had here. And we're going to see later that some of the information should have been there, but the FMCSA had a time frame. And the only way that they could effectively hide the current scores is take them down totally and even have the raw material, the backup, the inspections and crashes taken down too. So this is what affects us. However, let's talk about the steps. The first step FAST requires in the C, the Compliance Safety Accountability Reform, which is part two of the act, is the administrator, the FMCSA shall, shall means they have to do it, commission the National Research Council to conduct a study of the Compliance Safety Accountability Program of the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration and the safety measurement system utilized by the CSA program. In other words, a study has been mandated by Congress. The scope of the study, again, shall analyze the accuracy with which the behavior analysis and safety improvement identify high-risk carriers and a predictor and, or, or are, a co are coordinated with future crash risk, crash severity, or other safety indicators for motor carriers, including the highest-risk carriers. The methodology used to calculate basic percentages, identify, identify carrier for enforcement, and in predicting future crash risk for motor carriers has to be a part of this analysis, as well as the accuracy of the safety data, including the use of crash data from risk, a rush in which a motor carrier was free from flaw. Again, there's a study that ATRA did that just was published last month saying that why should a motor carrier's crash shown in the federal web pages be shown when the motor carrier did nothing wrong. Hit an animal, animal ran in front of them, sitting in a park, stuck there, and what that would have changed their scores. How members of the public use the SMS, meaning court cases, brokers, and this, and what effect making the SMS information public has had on reducing crashes and eliminating unsafe motor carriers from the industry. That's what was mandated. And this is what the analysis stuff. I've left some things out, but I just pointed out the highlight from you. Later, you can go in and read this 1,300 page. If you want to, it's on the web page. You can download it and read the whole thing. But they shall also consider in this reviewing of the program and the revamping program and the study whether FMS providers comparable uh, precisions and confidence through the SMS alert and percentages for relative crash risk of individual large and small motor carriers, how those things compare and what does they mean, whether the alternatives of the SMS would identify high-risk carriers more accurately. In other words, is there another system? Later we'll talk about a system that Steve Bryan, our friend that we, our honorary member of the foundation who has brought to us a program that he's presenting that it says is more accurate. Some of our insurance carriers have have taken data and figured out a way to use these inspections and past crashes as long as as well as the other operational in, information concerning the motor carrier to determine the crash predictor as we write insurance and what they're saying you need to study this and then they want the recommendations and finding of the set to the control of general no later than 18 months after the date of the act of this act so what the government has is 18 months to do this study to provide a report, to publish the report on a public accessible internet website of the department. Notice it's just to the report. It does not mean that any laws or actions have to be made. So we have kicked the CSA can down the street to have it revamped now for 18 months. So the FAST, the first provision of FAST is improvement in the CSA 
CSA methodology. 18 months to do it. So let's stop here for a minute. What's going to happen in the next 18 months? Based on everything that we hear, I mean, excuse me, we know that it's going to be an election. And the outcome of that election is going to, have, is going to be determined. We'll have, in 18 months, a new president. And in all likelihood, the FMCSA director will be looked at for continuation or not. And whether we'd have a new director or not would be up to the new president. But it's very uh, often that we do change those things. What incentive is the FMCSA going to have in these 18 months to complete this program when they know that they are maybe in a lot of cases have a lame, lame duck situation and how far are they going to fight Congress? That's my political statement I'm making here. I don't mean to say it's adverse or not or to say anything bad about the FMCSA. I'm talking about human nature now. So we got to think about all this revamp is going to be kicked down the road at least 18 months before these rules and after that there's going to have to be input and things like that. So what we're dealing with here is a long term, meaning two or three year process to have all this study done and have this report and see what the report says. So this is the first part of this. That's compliance, safety, accountability reform and the safety measurement system must be re looked at and a report as far as its accuracy, viability, and predictor of crashes and fairness to motor carriers must be accounted for before the FMCSA can use it again for public publications. Then what it says here, and this is the part that affected us, this is the part why when you went in Monday and you went in the SAFER and SMS you could not find your scores uh, for your insurance. Data uh, scores have to be hidden in general on and after the date that is that is one day after the date of the act of the act, meaning this was signed Thursday, president signed it Thursday, I signed it, excuse me, Friday, and one day after that, which we got in Monday morning, that's why it was shut down. And again, this is why I think the whole program was shut down because the FMCSA obviously did not have the ability to rewrite the program or software to hide just the scores. They had to hide everything. And then what, there's no information regarding analysis of violations, crashes in which a determination is made that a motor carrier or the, com or the commercial motor vehicle driver is not at fault, alerts, or the other relative percentage of each basic developed under a CSA program may be available to the general public until the inspector general of the department certifies that. The report required before, meaning the 18-month report we went to, has been there. The secretary has initiated modifications of the program according to that report. Again, 18 months from now, and have the modifications made. And then the uh, so what we're talking about here is that the scores are going to be hidden from a public web page that we have here for at least the 18 months that the program uh, or while the study is being done. So folks, we've got to get used to it. It's not going to come up again. We're not going to see the percentage. We're not going to see the scores. We're not going to be able to look without having some help. And we'll talk about that in a minute from third-party providers about this information. One other thing that has also come up is notwithstanding any other provision of this section, Inspections and violation information submitted to the Federal Motor Carrier Subcommittee by the Commercial Motor Vehicle Inspection Qualification Law Enforcement Auto Service Rate and absolute measurement shall remain available to the public. This is another part of it here. What it's saying, and here's what we're dealing with now, is that we should be able to see the inspections, the violations. We should be able to see the crashes that have, we've always seen. We just don't see the score anymore. Again, the word shall here makes it available. So when we check with FMCSA, what they're saying, and even in their programs they put out, is we took it down now, but we will put some of the information back. So eventually we should. What's that mean? The term soon. What does it mean soon for them? Is it two weeks? Is it a month? We don't know yet. They will have to revamp how they show their web pages and have somebody to reprogram their web pages to look at it to hide the scores yet, show the information. But it will become public again. So what in the near future? Again, a month. I can't predict that. We're dealing with the government. A month or two, or even maybe less than that, we'll be able to see the data. We'll just want to be able to see the scores and the basics. What was sent out December 4th, last Friday, from the FMCSA 
is as of December 4, 2015, pursuant to the FAST Act of 2015, much of the information previously available on the Motor Carrier Safety Administration website related to property carriers compliance and safety performance will no longer be displayed publicly. While the agency is not prohibited from displaying all of the data, no information will be available for the property carriers while uh, appropriately changes are made, meaning how do they take the scores down and still show the information. This is what it was this is what was said in the memo that we have here. So FAST was gone in one day, FMC is res response to not only the scores but all the other information down uh, as they find out how they appropriately change how they share this information to make sure that some of it's still available but not the percentages and not the scores. So the word shall is important, that means they have to do. When we look at legislation, and if you've met with this long in legislation, you'll see that the Congresses and other legislators use two words when giving directions to uh, departments. The word word is shall and the one word is will or may. So when you have may, that means the secretary has an option. If you say shall, they must do. So CSA scores, triangles, safety event group ratings are not public now and will not be for at least in my prediction, it can't be earlier than 18 months because that's reports going to come down, but a year or two. The study, will there be a study? Yes, the time frame against 18 months, but we're going to be dealing with a different administration, maybe even if a mix up, mixed up of that, different people in the FMCSA that's going to start the report, or excuse me, the report's going to be started under one administration, or the study's going to be started under one administration and completed with another. So again, we'll have to track these politics and those things. What will the insurance provider use now? No scores or triangles until study's over. We will go back to the, the individual inspections like we did prior to CSA, the individual crashes like we did prior to CSA. We just don't have the triangles in the comparison anymore, the shortcuts. When I went on the web page to find this out, there was also another uh, item here. What we'll find is the way, if you have the insured's PIN number, you can go in to the web page with their PIN number and the triangles and the scores are still shown there. But the insured has to give you the PIN number. It's just not available to the public. I went into those web pages and we checked that. And we found one other thing though now. There is not only the scores and the triangles as you found with a PIN number, but also there's a new icon. And I thought this is interesting for us, that icon is a truck with an umbrella over it. I have no idea what that symbolizes. But underneath it, it says insurance and others. When the CSA was originally rolled out, there was this icon. There was the eighth category that was going to be shown, said insurance. It was taken down when it finally put out. It resurrected itself again. And the only reason I'm pointing this out is this, to me, is the indication of what's going to happen when we complete the uniform registration system that will be completed by next September, where the DOT officer will be able to access the insurance information based on the DOT number, but not, not the MC number. And this will be shown because this web page can be accessed not only by the motor carrier, but the DOT enforcement officers. So here they can go in and find out the insurance um, of a motor carrier in the future and that right now it says NA, I mean it's not operable yet, but that icon now is in the new uh, program that I looked at when I went into online. For some of you who don't remember, I have a DOT number in my name and we have a PIN number so we went in and looked at the icon. I don't operate any trucks so I didn't have any triangles to look at or scores to look at, but I did look at the icon and that was something interesting. Uh, we'll look future of that. That'll be something we'll talk about in the future when that gets populated. But here's where we are, folks. We're now looking at we don't have this information. We got it used to the programs. We got used to triangles. We've used it for marketing purposes. Sometimes we even get leads based on it. So we have third-party vendors. They can help us provide the information we have been comfortable with and needed in the past. There can get the raw material. They'll be able to estimate, calculate CSA scores in their enhancement underwriting analysis programs. They'll be able to monitor and keep track of the motor carrier safety data, including the CSA scores because they have access to the roadside inspection and violation data. They can approximate the CSA scores and can calculate those. And these calculated scores can be available to their clients, to the third whoever uh, contracts with them for services. 
they have access to the raw data. So they have written software and they have uh, been able to analyze those things to come up with approximation of the score. Will it be exact? No, and the reason it won't be exact is any time frame it's done, what happens is the FMCSA, and, and currently what you, if you went in and looked at it, the information that is based and shown now was information downloaded November the 2nd with the score sh shown again and not downloaded again until December 7th. So if we looked at a score that was run, say, on December 1st, it would be based on bad inform different information, so if you went in and compared it on December 8th, it could be differently because of the time frame, the scores, or the data that was used to figure it. But the third-party vendors that we are used to, and we'll go through them in a second, have access to the raw material, and they're writing programs to be able to provide us the same information, or at least similar information, that we had before that we have become accustomed to in our underwriting and risk insurance help. The vendors we're talking about are two foundation members, CAB, Central Analysis Bureau, and Carrier Software. Uh, we have used them in our programs. They have spoken in our programs. We welcome them as members. We've done have them both the webinars and our honorary member, uh, Steve Bryant and Vizilo. Those three third-party providers of this information have programs that will allow retail agents, motor carriers, insurance companies to access the information they used to see based on the information that they're able to get through FMCA. It won't be immediately because, again, the download is just starting, but it will happen as they look at this formula in the foreseeable future. CAB, Central Analysis Bureau, they've been a provider of information to the insurance industry for a long, long time. They have been the number one source that we've used for insurance information underwriting and a very valuable source and tool to make the information we have to be easier to understand, additional analysis, and it's been a, a, a made the insurance providers, the motor carriers, be able to analyze their risk much quicker, to save time, to determine go forward, and to find out areas that they need to look at. Again, the chameleon cures are something that we know that they did in the past. Their scores are very something we rely on now. Their ability to bring all the public information to one easy to access format plus add their own analysis to the information has for many insurance providers become their first step in underwriting motor carriers. Think for a minute if you here are an insurance underwriter and or wholesale agent. How often do you go, when you look at the application, go to the CS, CAB information first before you go forward? Most of you would say yes if you were here and were able to do that. This is because they have become the great source of information and the worth of information to save us time and to uh, provide this. They will continue providing the information you had in the past. They send an email to their clients, and I'm paraphrasing it uh, here. And I would, you, if you're a client of theirs, go back and look at the whole data in the email. But their email included uh, parts of the following, and their bits and pieces they published last month also had this stuff. Their subscribers will not be impacted by the change, meaning the scores not to be presented anymore. The CSA report will remain intact. The CAB data remains available because they have access to the raw material, and you'll have it. C will continue to provide current scores, meaning scores shown now, and future scores will be calculated. So any score the motor carrier had shown when the fort went down is available to CAB, and those will be shown. The future scores will be calculated by CAB using the same familiar methodology which users have become relied on in evaluating this complex book of business. That's, I'm quoting their email. And what they're saying is we are going to take the mythology just like they did with the projection of the ISS scores and use the information we have and come up with a projector of the scores that we did before. So for the users of CAB, the insurance companies and retail agents and wholesalers who use it, the information you get very shortly will be very similar to what you had before. If you don't have access to CAB, then you might have a concern. We'll talk about that later. Carrier software, this is another source. A lot of you all have used these for leads in a long time. A few years ago, 
the foundation, I approached Greg Lack of Carrier Software and asked if he could develop a program to help monitor a motor carrier CSA scores. A big part of that is that warning letter which says you have to improve, agents you should, have, you should improve, and you should help them. So they develop a unique program to help track motor carrier CSA scores uh, that were developed for foundation members. They also have provided CSA safety analysis uh, to motor carriers to improve their operations and SMS scores. They had done that already. This was one of their clients. We then asked them to provide this information that they used to be used for motor carriers to the retail agents and underwriters to track the scores, understand the risk, and have a plan to improve the scores at a cost-efficient basis. So another third-party vendor that will be able to give you the scores, will be able to track the scores, will be able to analyze the information based on the uh, time saving by looking at where the uh, concerns are, where the scores are, will uh, be able to also do at a cost price efficiency that you would want to look at. They sent a memo out, again, December 5th, to all of their providers. FMCA removes CSA scores for public display. What does that mean to carrier software clients? Rest assured that carrier software will be able to continue to meet your needs for motor carrier safety performance information. Notice this is similar to what CAB sent out too, to ensure their clients that this information will be available. Why can they say that? Because they get the raw data, and they still have access to the raw data for FMCSA, and they have programmers to be able to project these things. They'll have the motor carriers watch monitoring. This is, again, the cost-efficient way to track this insured scores and other relevant changes in their operation on a monthly basis. They also have the check fleet underwriting report. This will be continued to provide current calculations of the scores, new inspection violation analysis, and timelines pinpointing each motor carrier safety issues to facilitate more information underwriters' decisions, meaning when it's going to be better, what type of what percentage of their vehicles are creating the information or the problems or not. And then the web the leads that you get, if you in the past used their services, you know that you were able to sort the leads out based on the CSA scores, so you know which motor carriers in the territories that you have purchased to get leads from need to have your attention. That will be available again using the calculated CSA scores, meaning their calculation of the CSA scores. And then the fleet safety management analysis continues to offer is comprehensive CSA. That's done when you have the motor carriers pin in most cases. So in those cases, you have the drivers and the violation analysis, and you have the pin number, so you'll have the exact information. And they'll be able to provide PSP and other things through that. So again, they're going to be as a third uh, party provider, the information we're used to, and in some cases even additional information based on these changes and having to revamp them just like CAB is. Visualo, Steve Bryant has quoted another time. They have de developed a just scoring system. It's an opt-in system, meaning the motor carrier allows C Visualo to track these scores. They can decide what scores they want to share, both CSA inspections and who to share it with, insurance providers, brokers, shippers, and even the drivers. So this is a program that Steve's done that. The difference here is this is an opt-in program, and you have permission of motor carriers. Our relationship are with thousands of these motor carriers, many of whom have informed us that they will continue to share their scores voluntarily, so we're providing a free me mechanism for them to do so. In other words, he, Steve is a memo, this is a memo he sent to us that he, for me to include in this presentation. Surgeon, broker, and shipper who want to retain access to these private scores will subscribe to the carrier selection and keep the visibility they have, they need on the on their carrier's insurance. So if their carrier is a part of Visilo and if the insurance carrier agents then contract with Visilo, they will be able to get the actual scores of the insurance their motor carrier based on the motor carrier being willing to share that with the public. It's an opt-in system keeping access to the real CSA scores and ISS and those new just scores is different than the other providers that we went through who calculated based on the raw information. So this is an exact score but the insurer has to offer to do that. So Vizlo's just promise uh, 
in the corrections to unfair CSA scores. This was published a month ago, October 22nd, and this is where Visual announced this new program to give the, the parallel, to run a parallel program with CSA scores called Just because it seeks to offer justice to fleets. It created an alternative method of scoring based on finding of independent enforcement experts. It makes the results available for use by fleets who are challenging CSA points. And here again, this is through the data queue or challenge the points with a, with any insurance provider or a shipper or even in the court system. Visual is upending how the industry views CSA. Again, this is a part of what the CSA study. Visual and Steve Bryant are already doing some of this that the studies mandate because they are looking at the flaws. They're introducing a parallel system and they're going to build in some of the principles as, as CSA that provides a true picture of compliance, safety, and accountability of the national medical carriers who are members here. So Steve and his program, Visual, is, is offering a service to the motor carrier uh, to show the exact scores and to show what it means as a factor based on their predictor of crashes and their true safety operation. So those are the three options that you have here. So here's where you are. Retail agents, insurance companies are sitting here. Unless you have a third party, CAB and or carriers lead, CAB focusing on insurance underwriting, carriage leads, helping retail agents and motor carriers to improve, you won't be able to have the scores. If you use the visual program for selective risk you have, the risk would be joined, the motor carriers would be joined and you'd have the information. Without the use of third party, there will be less information and will take more time to find out because you will not get the scores. And why this is important is because the, MC, the FMCSA enforcement officer is still going to visit their insured. The FMA enforcement officer is still going in to see which of the insurers have problems or not. The warning letters are going to come, and we won't know about those without tracking this. Before we can look at it and see this, what happened, we can't do it. So third party, this is extremely important. If you use third party providers, then the information you have relied on in the past will still be furnished by the third party. Again, check with uh, your contract or your contract excuse me, not contract, contact information person with CAB to find out when they their time frame to be able to produce these scores and actually how they're going to present it to you. Check with your contact with carriers leads to find out again the time frame. But both of them are intending to show scores that will be a reflection of the scores that will be of their basics based on formulas and the raw data. And they both feel they they will be able to provide that in a very short time frame. So CAB and Carriers Lead will show the projected scores using the methodology and raw data they have available to them. And they access, both of them access the same raw data. They have contracts to FMCSA to gain this data and they have under, they have programmers to, to analyze it and then project these scores. The user CAB will see little differences in how they do things in a very short foreseeable period of time. Carrier software will still be able to track scores and provide the motor carriers with a plan to improve for retail agents who are helping motor carriers improve the score. Visualo with the consent of motor carriers will also give this inf exact information available to the to the insurance providers or in case of Visio to shippers or other interested parties. So we're now if this information has become valuable to you the third party vendors are someone that you're going to have to contract with. Why would you want to do this? Well, it saves money. What do you mean it saves money? Well, why are you at retail agents? Now you go in and look at a risk. Before we can see if they have a triangle, before we can see if they had an alert, before we can see if we need to do something about it, now you can't see that. So you're going to sit there and analyze their inspections, sit there and analyze the crashes, see where inspections were, and even you're going to see all the inspections, even the old system, we did not see all of them. We just saw the ones without a service. Now we see all the inspections. And are you going to be able to analyze that quicker enough so when you send the risk in and the, the underwriter gets that risk and then they run it through their system, CAB, and CAB says, well, they have this problem. They have these scores and you didn't know about retail agent. It's going to cost both parties time. So the third party vendor will save time. Time costs you money. So these third party vendors are the only way we're going to get the information that we used to be able to get free 
to be able to properly analyze your risk, decide who we want to do business with, and decide uh, what might need to be helped as we do business. Retailers will not have the information available that insurance provider will because in most of the cases, the insurance providers that we deal with are have contract with the CAB unless they also have an arrangement with a third party, either CAB itself, they have a program for retail agents, soft, a carrier software, or in cases where they have their insured's consent with Steve's Visual program. So we're going, you, you're going to need to look at this whether you're an insurance agent and or a company that's not using one of these services now to decide which ones you want to use to be able to buy the same service and understand what is the effect on your insurance. Again, I want to remind you, they're still going to have inspections. They're still going to have other things involved. And so this is a part. What information will be available? When inspection and crashes become available again, FMCSA says it will soon, then we're going to be back to the future. Remember before CSA SMS, yes, five years ago, there was no safety event groups, no scores, no triangles. So then we had to look at every inspection and crashes with the application loss run and make the decision. This is the system here. Now that we have the third party vendors, it'll save us time and effort to do this, and they'll do this analysis for you, which will save everybody time. There's a couple other things that FAST came out and that we need to be aware of. One of the things we've been looking at is the safety fits determination. Currently, as you know, it's satisfactory, conditional, unsatisfactory, or unrated. Only inspections at motor carrier's location, when the DOT officer comes and does an inspection, it's a full compliance inspection, that there will be a rating system. Most of the time now, there's an unrated visit, meaning they're just looking for specific things. There's an increase in the unrated because of the lack of attention, and right now there are projections here about 90% of motor carriers with DOT number are currently unrated. About 50% are rated satisfactory. This is the system. It's been promised now since the rolling out a CSA that there's going to be a safety fitness determination based on roadside activities. FMCA has said the new SFA will be published by the end of the year. This is what was put out less than a month ago. They promised to be based on roadside activities. What does this new proposal act do? Because what the new act says, in fast, says that limitations of the users of CSA information, information regarding alerts and relative percentages for each basic development under the CSA program may not be used for safety fitness determination until the Inspector General of the Department makes the certification under this subsession, meaning that the safety fitness determination will not become available as a part of this program until the study is done as I read this. So the long anticipated another way to evaluate a risk uh, and, and have some of the unrated risks now have some indication based on low dose activities and rated by the motor carrier, excuse me, rated by the motor carrier back to MCC available to us will not be available till then. There, but there is another thing that's now included here, and this is one thing, if you went to the web page, you might find, if you click on a motor carrier now, it'll say a notation. The notation described, must be described above, shall include. So anytime you click on a carrier for information, even if you have their PIN number, readers should not draw conclusions about a carrier's overall safety condition simply based on the data displayed in this system. That's the CSA system, SMS system. Now only here is the PIN number. Unless a motor carrier has received an unsatisfactory safety rating under the part here, that means when the DOT officer has come and come and done a full compliance inspection and is unrated inspection here, or has otherwise been ordered to discontinue operation by the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, it is authorized to operate on the national highways, meaning hopefully this wording, and this is wording that was originally put into FMCSA, uh, excuse me, S. SMS back in the March after it was rolled out in December through a lawsuit, but it has been de-emphasized that now when you go in, every time you look for information, this is red, which it means here is hopefully, or what they hope this would do is keep it out of the court system and hopefully that the brokers understand if I can operate, that's as far as you can go. That's a whole different subject we have, but it was interesting that part of this act requires this wording to be also to be published. So should not draw about a motor carrier's overall safety condition here. Shipping and brokers had asked for a national hiring standard. This did not get in the final act. 
the notification did. Our other suggestion was to not only remove scores from the public end, but also to not allow the information to be used in the court systems. Again, in both cases, hopefully this additional notification, the more emphasis in it, will relieve one of the will relieve the problems of the liability of a broker for hiring a motor carrier that is uh, has authorization operation authority that's not unsatisfactory, and the same thing uh, for the court systems to keep it out of court. We'll see what happens later, but that's the objective in putting this out. Another thing was kind of interesting, folks, increased insurance limits. We have been talking about this. We've written blogs on it. I've even in programs talked about the, the problems going to be had if it goes up. As we know, a congressman in, in Pennsylvania wanted to raise the limit to 4.3 million. It's projected here. This is part of FAST, very interesting, insurance rules study. Likewise, Congress directs FMCA to further study carriers' liability insurance minimum, and before initiating a rule to raise them, the provision essentially adds another hurdle to FMCA potential work to increase the amount of liability insurance required to be held by the motor carrier currently at 750 for the non-hazardous rate. So, should this allow even or even stop the move of increase? Maybe, because when you read the actually wording in it. It says that no later, uh, not later than a year from now, the secretary shall publish on the public accessible internet website a report of the minimum limits financial permit. But the report must contain the difference between state insurance requirements and federal requirements, meaning getting consistency in there. The extent of which current minimum levels of financial responsibility adequately cover medical costs and compensation, meaning indemnity, and the frequency with which insurance claims exceed the current minimum levels of financial responsibility. So they have a year now to study this, about a year and a month to study this, but they cannot now raise the limit. So again, the possibility of increased limit has been pushed down. And I also contend to you is this is the current FMCSA was pushing for this, did a study here, and and the, the two thousand January first, two thousand seventeen, when they published this and actually do it, will we be dealing with new potential administration and new people there? So that would be something that will problem. There are also other things beyond compliance. Uh, the conference agreement uh, directs FMCSA to establish a program as part of the CSA to allow. Uh, renegotiation including credits or an improved SMS percentage of carriers. Again, this is something where now they're going to have a quote a, a more safer than safety level. This again where retail agents can help the motor carrier to conform to this new system. This is the best practice system. This is just FMCSA saying that you're, you have exceeded the standards here and therefore you have a program that says you're one of the more elite carriers for 18 months. This again is something a retail agent needs to look at and something a retail agent can start offering there. Crash accountability, same thing here, the study. They're saying again that they, they must, uh, they OT to task Again, to review the treatment of non-preventable crashes. How do you keep it out of the system? This has been a big argument from, uh, that we've had. This is a report that Atra just did that shows where it's not fair for a motor carrier to have crashes shown in a part of their rating system based when they didn't do anything wrong. They're sitting in a stop sign. They were sitting in a hotel and their truck was parked in the, um, in the uh, uh, parking lot and somebody runs into them or even in the situation where an animal uh, runs in front of them. Those things now are shown in crashes. They cannot, again, they must take those down as a part of the study. They're going to allow hair testing for instead of urinal. This is also uh, to look at this. And there's a commercial driver uh, pilot program uh, where we're going to do a study on the intrastate state of drivers that are 18 and 21 years old uh, commercial to, on the, to determine to go forward. One of the things that didn't happen, we'll talk about in a minute, is that the younger drivers did not get a part of this program that has been put off. So this is another thing we need to look at. And then this is what did not get included, is the under 21 drivers. There was a big push here. At, uh, the, the Senate had a part of their bill to allow a, a agreement between states to allow 18-year-olds to drive interstate. 
Right now in most states, an 18-year-old can drive intrastate, just can't cross state lines in this study here. That was not put a part of this. The agency in this study will study the benefit and safety impact by having younger drivers, but they're not going to allow it until that study is finished. Is fast good or bad? Time will tell. The effects on the insurance provider has addressed concerns by delaying increased limits, requirements, no younger drivers. Those things were positive. To get the highways better was also positive. Uh, it's not so good how insurance providers use information for underwriting programs and what information will be available. Now you have a need for a third party provider uh, so that it's going to cost a little more if you want to play in this arena, if you want to provide truck insurance to commercial auto users, then you're going to have to decide how to access information and also how to how does it impact your model to who to do business with based on this third party information or what you have available. The bad FMSA will still use the information to have interventions, letters coming out, pay attention to motor carry, find the motor carry when they exceed when their scores exceed the threshold. It just won't be easy for us anymore to determine if they've done that. The warning letters will go out, the court system will be able to obtain those warning letters. So again to try to prevent those things. Fast, good, bad, or continue. Retail agents, selection of risk to approach to provide services. Help with scores. What scores? The PIN will be available if you can get it. We had, I read an uh, article today about loss prevention. How many of your insurers are going to give a PIN to you or not? Particularly before you start writing it. One of the things that loss prevention people now contact the insurer, particularly for pre-binding uh, information is how we're going to be able to get the PIN, their scores. Will they provide that to you as a loss prevention purpose? Third party need to contact the retail agent and see what they can provide you as a retail agent to better offer services to the motor carrier and at what cost. That's what you have to do as far as the three third party. The uniform registration systems also coming. One other thing that we need to be aware of here is that December 12, 2015, we're going to have a new portal to be able to register to obtain a DOT number. The final is going to be September 30th, 2016 is when the exempt haulers and for hire, excuse me, private hazmat interstate commerce and for hire interstate commerce will have to have an insurance filing. This new application is MAP is MSA-1. If you get with risk who are just starting to get a new DOT number, you might this new application, as far as I the website they did, has some hard to understand things. So this is going to also be effective next week, where now there's going to be a new portal for all new DOT numbers. That portal will be used for everybody to update their information. Now we call 150. No longer it will be a 150 form with MSA-1 form that we have to update it. But that won't be effective until September 30th of 2000 and, or 2016. But for a new entry, it's going to be effective December 12th. Electronic logs devices were rolled out today. It's finally rolled out. So there's a further step now to equally enforcement hours of service. And it's going to be uh, two years from now that the motor carriers are going to have to have electronic logs. And uh, part of the talk is going to increase driver shortage, productivity. Now they won't be able to run around the uh, do over hours. Uh, the court cases are going to be able to work around if they don't use them or not. So this is something that just came down this week. There's also driver uh, coercion rule published. This is part of the uh, act where a motor carrier, a broker, a shipper can be fined $16,000 for coercion a driver to drive when it will violate their safety. It's, uh, the rule says a treatment by a motor carrier shipper, receiver, or transportation intermediary or their respective agent to withhold business, employment, or work opportunity from or to take or permit any adverse employment action against a driver in order to introduce the truck driver under conditions which the driver stated would require him or her to violate one or more of the FMC's regulations. Meaning if the driver says I cannot take that load because I violate my hours of service, the shipper then does takes adverse action or the motor carrier gets adverse action, then the person who's been involved in that. Uh, just got a, a, a email this today 
from uh, Greg Fury with uh, Scopolitis Agency about we need to be careful with this. Part also we did on our webinar last in the last week about the employment practice liability. This is an employment question too. Does your EPL covers this? The good part about this is this this sixteen thousand dollars does not go to the driver. It goes to the highway funds. So the driver will not get any monetary benefit out of this. So that's why they would make another claim involved here, not only this, into an EPL situation. Note that one of our friends, Tom Dickmeyer, has a program through the third party insurance group to allow that Steve Bryan is going to explain his program to you on December 17th. We'll, you'll get an email sent out to you that anybody who wants to participate in that program, we encourage you to do that to find that out. Final thoughts. Yes, it's caused a problem. This is one of the larger webinars we've done from the numbers of attendance because of all the attention that we were here. But what it's going to take you as a retail agent, as an insurance provider, as an insurance company, is to reach out to these third-party providers to find out how they can help you and at what cost they can help you to still be a part of this industry. I think once all this sorts out, based on all the information I'm getting from CAB and carriers leads, that what you are used to in the past will be still available to you in the future in a very short period of time. Again, you got they have to have time to revamp this information and to to make sure it meets their expectations before they furnish it to you. So, but you need to look at as a provider insurance to motor carriers how uh, you want to keep this information and make it available. I remember again, it is going to be available to the court systems because it will be a part of production, to the FMCSA officers for enforcement, so we still need to be aware of this and still need to help the insured this. The next truck stop will be done January 14, 2000 at 2 p.m. We hope you will listen to that. We'll publish the, uh, I'm working on a couple of subjects there. We hope you find today's program informative and uh, thank you for your time.